Good evening. A very warm welcome to you all. And uh, if you come from Little Hill Church, a, a warm welcome. And also if you just joining us as a one-off things, a very warm welcome to you. We're going to have a short study of God's Word and then we will follow at about quarter past eight for our prayer time together. And uh, as you know, over the last few weeks, we've been studying the names given to Jesus in the scriptures. And uh, although this uh, makes a very interesting study in the scriptures, the names were not just given as they sound interesting, but they, the names reveal something of the personality of the character and of the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we come to look at Jesus, it means something uh, to us. And this evening we're going to look at uh, the word, the name given to Jesus, the name of Emmanuel. This is again interpreted for us in the scriptures, which means God with us. God with us, God being with each and every one of us. Before we look at this in a, in a, in a depth, first of all, let's ask God to help us to understand and look at his word. Let's all pray together. Dear God, we want to thank you for the scriptures because in them we can look at what you really want us to understand. We thank you for the names uh, you reveal to us which are given to the Lord Jesus Christ because it tells us something about the nature and the character of our, our Saviour. And we want to thank you also for being uh, good to us, giving us the scriptures. And we pray, Father, for those people who do not have the scriptures, they don't have the Bible in their own languages, they don't have uh, people who are able to help them to understand what is in the scriptures. And we also pray, Father, you be with them. Pray also with those, dear God, for those who are translating the scriptures into different languages. We thank you that are men and women who are dedicated to this work and working very hard in order that ordinary people have the scripture in their own languages. And we want to thank you also for the Bible colleges where they are taught how to uh, help people to understand the Word of God, those who train preachers and teachers in the things of God. And we pray, Father, for London Seminary, Seminary in London, and we pray for uh, those overseas, particularly for EBCOM, Evangelical Bible College of Malawi. We want to thank you also for the training of pastors in Vinukonda and we ask so oh God that you be with them and as they translate the scriptures and help others to understand your word and we need your help we ask that you be with us we thank you for the promise of the Holy Spirit who is able to come alongside us in helping us to understand the great truths in the scriptures and we ask that you help us uh, that this evening. And we do all ask all this uh, through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we uh, do this, we want to look at God's Word. First of all, if you've got a Bible, perhaps you'd like to turn with me to Isaiah chapter 7. We're going to read seven or eight verses uh, from that Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 10 and we're going to read it to verse 17. This is what we have it recorded for us. Again the Lord spake to Ahaz, ask a sign of the Lord your God, let it be deep as shoal as high as the heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. 
he shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring upon you, upon your people, and upon your father's house such days as have not since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. So read God's word to us uh, this evening. We're going to look at um, uh, under three titles, three headings for this evening. How Isaiah understood the word Emmanuel as we read in the passage before us. And how Matthew understood the word Emmanuel uh, in his days and what he meant for Matthew and also for Joseph and Mary at that time. And then thirdly, how do we understand the word Emmanuel uh, for us today in the 21st century? First of all, then looking at how Isaiah understood the word Emmanuel. <clears throat> there is no doubt Today, China is a superpower and is competing with the USA for being the most powerful nation on earth. There are several countries in the West who are trying to restrict the influence by this superpower. There's a coalition of countries such as USA and Australia and Canada and EU and UK to work together to oppose Chinese influence in the society in which we live. Well, I want to take you back to the time when the prophecy was given and uh, through Isaiah. At that time, Assyrian had an empire, which was one of the superpowers of the day. It was increasing in world influence and increasing in world power. So Israel and Syria were generally concerned about the Syrians and they formed a coalition and invited Judas to be part of that coalition. So the coalition forces, they invited King Ahaz to join with them, but he was a bit hesitant. So the coalition decided to overthrow Ahaz and to do a bit of nation building themselves, which means they were able to, or they wanted to set up a puppet king uh, in Judah. And does that sound very familiar to you? It certainly sounds familiar uh, to me. So when all this came, King Ahaz got scared and he sent a, a delegation with gold and silver from the temple and he actually sent it to the Assyrians and ask for their protection. And it was then that God sent Isaiah and told him not to rely on Assyrians for protection, but he need to trust God himself and all his people need to trust God. Let me read to you Isaiah chapter 7, verse 4 to 7, which we read earlier. And the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out and meet Ahaz, you and the Shia Jashub, your son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool of the highway to the washer's field, and say to him, Be careful, be quiet, and do not fear, and do not let your heart be faint because of these smouldering stumps and firebrands, at the fierce anger of Resin in Syria and the son of Amalia. Because Syria, with Ephraim and the son of Amalia, had devised evil against you, saying, let us go up against Judah and terrify it, and let us conquer it for ourselves, and set up a Tabila as a king in the midst of it. So Ahaz did not believe what Isaiah said to said to him, and um, but Isaiah said, nevertheless, God Himself will send you a sign that what He promising you now will come into power. Look at verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call 
his name Emmanuel. So what we have here, there's a promise of God uh, given to Ahaz. And there's a promise, the same promise was given to Joseph in the Matthew's account. And if you were to read into the next chapter of Isaiah, and you will see the king of Assyria took the wealth of Damascus and Samaria and Judah's one unharmed. So you see the, the promise which God made through Isaiah to uh, Ahaz had come into uh, being. The child in Isaiah days then would signify the deliverance of God's people from the oppressive regime forces. And God remembered his promises and keeps them despite the awful leadership which they had at that time. Just look at what Ahaz was like. He was really an evil man and he did not in any way follow God's way. He even sacrificed his own children to false God. I do not know about you but I get quite concerned about the political leadership in our own country and also in the whole of, of the Western world. Because we have taken God's values and God's way and God's law. But somehow, and I don't understand how, God continues to be faithful and continue to fulfill his promises. What we mean is this, that we are privileged to have the scriptures. We have the privilege of hearing God's word and having the opportunity to read God's word ourselves in our own languages. And there's an opportunity for us to worship God and fellowship with one another. God is so gracious and good to us. God is faithful to his promises and to his people. So a child which was to be born in Ahaz's day was a sign of God's deliverance of his people from the oppressive armies of the surrounding nations. Do you know, that promises for us too. God has promised to deliver us, not just from the army of the nation, deliver us from our sins. God sent a saviour, God sent us a deliverer in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a sign for us that God delivered his people from their sins. So that's how Ahaz understood the promise of God. God being the deliverer. And it's also a message for us today. So how do we understand that today? How did Matthew understood the word Emmanuel when he was writing the gospel. Let me read to you a few verses from Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 24. It's concerning the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. So here we have Matthew's record of the story about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you know, the Gospel of Matthew was written particularly for those people 
who were familiar with the Old Testament and particularly those who understood the prophecies of the Old Testament. And Matthew goes into great length to explain the fulfillment of the Old Testament as you read through the scriptures together. Matthew's gospel makes 16 references to the fulfillment of the prophecies which are in the Old Testament. I'm sure that makes a, a very interesting study. We read the good news about the fulfillment of what God had promised long time ago. You remember the prophecy uh, in the Old Testament by Isaiah. It was 700 years gap before it came to be fulfilled. We have a record of the angel of the Lord appearing to Joseph. He's in an exceedingly difficult situation because Mary is pregnant and he knows that he's not the father. He did not want to marry to be shamed. But the angel explained to Joseph as to what was happening, that what God had promised to Isaiah was now being fulfilled. This was being fulfilled through Joseph and Mary. And he was not to be afraid to take Mary, his wife. And here we have Matthew records the birth of Jesus to Virgin Mary. It's so remarkable and what we read, what Emmanuel uh, means. It means God with us. God with us. It, it meant a real comforting and encouragement to Joseph. It meant real encouragement to Mary, knowing that whatever they might have to go through, there might be a big shame involved. There might be discrediting of their character and of their nature. They are to realize that God is with them. So what it means for us today? Well, it means two things. First of all, remember the original message. It was that God is the deliverer of his people. It's promise for you and it's promise for me that God will deliver his people from their sins. But it also means something else, doesn't it, for us? And what he means, according to Matthew, that God is with us. Let's apply that to ourselves. God's most frequent promise in the Bible is this. I am with you. I am with you. For instance, when God asked Moses to go back to Egypt to set his people free and take on this impossible task of freeing over a million people from the hardness and the cruelty of Pharaoh and he wasn't sure whether he was able to do that. And no matter how good and great man Moses may have been, but he's sure he's not going to be able to face this. You know what God says to him? Go, I am with you. I am with you. And he went and he took that promise which God has made and he did set his people free. God is with you. So another instance, when Joshua took over the leadership from Moses, he was a young man and he was an inexperienced man. They, they, they quite good things to have, or, but not on a, on a task which Joshua was to have. And God says to him, and uh, when he's reluctant to go, God says to him, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So whether you're young and ex inexperienced, and if you go in your own strength, you will fail. But if you have God with you, there's a no greater combination than looking to God and seeing that he is with you at that time. And what was the last promise Jesus made to his disciple before he gave him that great commission? He said, surely I am with you, even to the end of the age. 
where are we? Jesus is with us. Wherever we are, Jesus is with us. We may, not, we may not always feel his presence. This doesn't mean that he's not with us. That doesn't mean he's not keeping his promise. In tough times, when we lose, when you lose your loved ones, when you lose your job, when you lose your health, and when you uh, have uh, difficulty in finances, but the Lord is still with you. This is what he says. Listen to um, Isaiah again. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I gave Egypt as for your ransom, Kirsch and Seba in exchange for you. There's nothing God wouldn't do to keep you that himself, to make your presence uh, known to you. Listen to what David says in Psalm 9, verse 9 and 10. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name will trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. This is God's promise, not only to David, it's for you and me. A more familiar psalm to us, Psalm 23 and, and verse 4 read this. Even though I walk through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You remember that hymn writer says in that hymn, How Firm a Foundation. And uh, let me read a couple of verses from that. When through the deep waters I call thee to go, the rivers of sorrows shall not overflow. For I will be with thee, thy troubles to bless, and sanctify to thee thy deepest distress. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace, all sufficient, shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. This is what Emmanuel means. Always in every instance, in every circumstances. God is with us. Let's all pray together. We thank you, Lord, for your gracious and your loving promises for your people. No matter what situation we find ourselves during this difficult time, and we know that you are with us. We still have to go through the fire and rivers, but we know that we will not be burned. And these things, rivers will not overwhelm us because you are promised through your word. We thank you for your promise to Ahaz, your promise to Joseph and your promise to us and your promise to your disciples that I am with you. So Lord, we ask you to continue to be with us. Help us as we meet together to pray and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Could you just remind those from Little Hill that we are meeting together about quarter past eight to pray.